Penny, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. You had a fascinating ch chat there with General David Petraeus. He talked about cyber security and that being a real issue going forward. It is a real issue going forward and I was so glad that it's so high on his agenda and I hope that it's equally as high on the government agenda. And you know, it's such an amorphous kind of threat, but he had some specific recommendations like you need legislation and you need a legal basis to put a perspective on things. So I thought it was very helpful. Do you think his insights are unique because of his past and what he's done in terms of the geopolitical outlook? Um, you know, they have more authority because of his career. You know, in some ways I wondered if he was too optimistic when he comes to talk about Saudi, which he feels is very stable and they've weathered all the issues around the succession, not only this time, but to the next generation. You know, in other ways, he was fascinating talking about, you know, the possible constraints on any cooperation with Iran, say. Is this a unique conference to bring people like that together in, in one place at one time? What does this well, conference do? I think it is so important to put the narrow issues of private equity into a more broad context. You know, it's fine to obsess about returns and fees, but when you're an investor, you need to think about the larger issues. I mean, if you're going to invest in, say, an, you know, um, an aircraft company or a travel business, don't you need to think about pandemics, you know, that kind of thing. So I think it's incredibly useful to have somebody who can give you such a sense of context. And do you think as well those companies have to have social responsibility so they should know more about where they're investing as well? They totally should. And you know, how can you invest in a company in Asia without thinking of the tremendous problems about water security? when practically every river in Asia starts in Tibet. You know, you cannot be oblivious to the context. And yet I think the danger is so often people aren't thinking in a broad enough way and in a speculative enough way. And I'm using speculative in a positive rather than a negative sense. You get to talk to so many people here as both a, a, a facilitator on stage but also amongst the crowds here. What do you see as the hot topics and what do they say to you about what's in the forefront of their minds at the moment? Well, it depends if you're talking about the narrow issue or the broader issues. You know, as somebody who's sort of watched the industry grow up, you know, it's kind of depressing to hear the founders say, no one can do this again. We've started everything. We have the scale. You know, you all better go home and think about something else, you know? Did you hear Guy Hans talking earlier about going back to the future in that sense as well, almost being a two-tier system where they have the guys who are the very big GPs who are very institutionalized, but then some need, there need to be the more bespoke private equity houses? You know, the big firms want to have it all, you know, and, you know, now you sit and listen to the earnings calls, and because the big buyouts, the big take private seem to be a thing of the past, their mantra is, we're all about growth equity, you know, and there are should we get more into tech and should we trespass on the venture capitalists? So, you know, in some ways I think Guy's vision is both too simplistic and not cynical enough. Yeah, he's fairly buoyant mood at the moment. Maybe it's because he's got a billion pounds to invest. <laughs> I think some of his LPs are wondering why his net worth is so much greater than theirs. Thank you so much for joining us.